prophetic saying, none of you truly believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. I think Dr. Hani is one of the great philanthropists, one of the great humanitarians of our current times. Dr. Hani El Banna, for services to Islamic relief. Hani El Banna. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, dear viewers, welcome to another episode of the With Dr. Hani program. This uh, episode is about the presentations that were published on Dr. Hani's Facebook page, training and its role in developing humanitarian resources, uh, presented by Dr. Sayyid Azanari, governance and its role in developing the resources of civil society institutions uh, by Dr. Tariq Atifi, Learning and Knowledge Management for Humanitarian Organizations by Dr. Abdrabdi bin Sahra. And uh, finally, Advocacy Donor Policy Change uh, by uh, Ms. Leila Hisso. Dr. Hani, uh, you are welcome. Yeah, ahlan wa sallam, ahlan wa sallam again. Good to see you. Uh, let me first, uh, Dr. Hani, uh, recall the richness uh, that all participants in the global dimensions of humanitarian work forum uh, touched and uh, the excellence in the presentations of a group of uh, distinguished leaders and cadres uh, through your uh, experience uh, dr hani does this uh, outstanding uh, performance reflect institutional maturity or is it only uh, an individual efforts of uh, some distinguished models of humanitarian workers such as uh, dr sayyid dr afifi dr abdrabbi uh, miss uh, hisso and others alhamdulillah uh, uh, to be very honest uh, during these three days most of what the distinguished speakers were talking about was something I was thinking about for years. And alhamdulillah that we met in the middle without any planning. What we have done is just send them the title of the talk, not the details about manner, about history, about research, about uh, governance, about uh, culture, about philosophy of thinking, about media, about international work, all this. Alhamdulillah, and they spoke, or actually, as we are actually having an orchestra singing the same, or composing the same symphony. Mm -hmm. Regarding to what they mentioned in their presentation, all of them, it is individual maturity more than institutional maturity, unfortunately. Some of them actually are like freelancers, they work alone and some of them are a part of organization and the gap between them and their organization is like this. Mm -hmm. In the intellectual capability and the thinking forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, something which we need to realize that some brains inside the organization are ahead, far ahead mm -hmm of their own local or international or global organizations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, in his presentation, uh, Dr. Sayyid uh, talked about the difference between uh, service and experience. Uh, yes. uh, he also said that uh, training is what transforms service into uh, experience let me uh, dr hani ask you uh, in general about the reality of the interest of arab and islamic humanitarian institutions in training and qualifying their cadres in order to achieve this experience that uh, dr sayyid spoke about unfortunately the budget 
for training and capacity building in most of the Arab organizations are very, is very minimum, very minimum. Even I struggle so much when we organize training workshop mm -hmm. or capacity building workshop and try to fundraise, mm -hmm. uh, they are not interested mm -hmm. to do that. This is an attitude and this is a philosophy of thinking, unfortunately. Not only for the training and capacity building, mm -hmm. but also for the research. Mm -hmm. The research and communication and networking. Because networking and communication needs budget mm -hmm. as well. So nowadays, most of the people, unfortunately, Arabs and non-Arabs, Muslims and non-Muslims, are very busy firefighting and mm -hmm. firefighting means it's responding to disasters, mm -hmm. responding to armed conflicts and because nowadays the fundraising become easier than 30 years mm -hmm. ago, people are very much uh, directed towards fundraising mm -hmm. than actually doing this actually tedious and difficult training work. Mm -hmm. So we still need to highlight that an employee uh, which does not have a capacity, mm -hmm. which is not very well trained, mm -hmm. will be a burden on the organization and mm -hmm. could lead to uh, become a part of the corruption of the organization and wasting the resources of the organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Uh let me uh, ask you about uh, Dr. Tariq Afifi's uh, presentations, and it was about uh, governance. Uh, there are those who understand uh, governance as systems, uh, laws, and work rules. Uh, but Dr. Tariq Afifi uh, referred in his presentation to uh, a comprehensive concept of uh, good governance, al hakam al-Rashida, uh, as he uh, calls it. What are, uh, in your opinion, uh, Dr. Hani, the elements of uh, good governance? Most important element is the behavior of the people, especially the leadership. Mm -hmm. If the leadership does not become a role model, you cannot implement any law or any regulation. Mm -hmm. You see, Allah has revealed the Quran in 23 years. We have got millions and millions of copies of Quran at home. Mm -hmm. But who is going according to Quran? Who is, as Hazrat Aisha was talking about uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Kana Khulukur Quran, or Kana Quran al Yamsha al Ard? He was, his manner was Quranic, or his, uh, he was a Quran, a walking Quran on earth. His enemies used to, tr to trust him, to respect him. Never said mm -hmm. anything bad about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was a role model before becoming a prophet and after became a prophet. A man mm -hmm. of justice, credibility, integrity. That's why everybody loved him and everybody followed him before bringing the laws and the regulation which happened during the time of Hazrat Omar when he started to build the structure of the Muslim states in Medina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at that time, it was uh, governing by role modeling, mm -hmm. governing by example, mm -hmm. governing by coexistence and living together, transparency, mm -hmm. governing by fairness and treating mm -hmm. people equal, Governance by uh, being the first to take the responsibility and the last to take the reward. Mm -hmm. This was the governance that uh, Brother uh, Tariq actually was talking about. Mm -hmm. This is like uh, the spirit of governance. Mm -hmm. The law mm -hmm. and the procedures and uh, the regulation is very dry or are very dry. Mm -hmm. You can't make them effective unless 
you make them very wet to come together and to put mm -hmm. the uh, spirit of this regulation in the mm -hmm. behavior and the conduct of the leadership. Mm -hmm. Without good behavior and good conduct of the leadership, forget about the law. Mm -hmm. It becomes uh, like a penalty, penalizing or rewarding. Very, very dry and does not let any organization stand on its feet. It is needed, but mostly we need the spirit to be inside this regulation. <laughs> there's something called in Arabic, there is Ruh al-Dustur, Wunas al-Dustur. Ruh al qanun Wunas al the spirit of the Constitution and the statement of the Constitution, the spirit of the law and the uh, statement of the law. So you have to balance between the spirit of the law and constitution and the law itself as a text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when uh, referring to the internal challenges of humanitarian institutions, we usually uh, talk about financial uh, resources, as you mentioned, and human uh, resources training, as well as governance. But... Uh, what is the location of interest in knowledge? knowledge? Are our humanitarian organizations interested in knowledge management? Some of the organizations do not understand what you mean about knowledge. Mm -hmm. What you mean about data. Mm -hmm. What you mean about information. Because it is becoming very philosophical and the higher level of discussion for their level. Mm -hmm. The most important part in the success of any organization is to collect the data. Mm -hmm. Then to change the data into uh, uh, into knowledge, and then the knowledge becomes the procedure or the product that actually you are going to deal with. Mm -hmm. The data is the raw material, which is like the gold in the sand, or the sand gold. Unless you go to the gold mine and take this sand gold, then, then refine it, it will never become gold. Mm -hmm. So from the raw material to become gold, and the gold then become afterwards a necklace, rings, belts, uh, bracelets and others, or be used in different areas. So this process of uh, raw material or data, uh, then uh, information, then knowledge, then product is a process of maturity inside the minds of the organization to be able to create this knowledge. Mm -hmm. And here we give the example of the social media platforms mm -hmm. who are using the raw material. The raw material there in Google, in Facebook, in Wikipedia, in uh, TikTok, in Instagram, in Telegram, in WhatsApp, is your, your, your information. Mm -hmm. They took it and now becomes multi-billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they know how to manage this knowledge and this data and this information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the presentations, uh, uh, which were very important, uh, included the important messages for humanitarian workers. Dr. Sayed, for example, uh, spoke about psychological conditions uh, su such as uh, Stephen Coffey's rule, sharpening the saw. And uh, uh, he spoke also about the DPD, uh, which is, uh, or uh, PDP, which is the Personal Development Plan. He uh, stated also that change comes from the person himself. Dr. Abd Rabbi uh, also directed humanitarian workers to not seeking uh, job security, but seeking career uh, development. 
what is your uh, message, Dr. Hani, uh, through these uh, messages to humanitarian workers in this uh, regard? Yeah, uh, if the, 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 the English proverb say, if you have a well, you have a way. So as maybe, if you remember, uh, Mr. Asad Taha said, mm -hmm. don't send me someone who is not interested in media to train him. I don't mm -hmm. want him. Okay. Mm -hmm. If this personal development does not come from yourself, you will never, mm -hmm. never climb the ladder. Mm -hmm. You will never rise in your career. You will never be promoted or somebody else promoting yourself. Mm -hmm. The personal development may be your self-regulation, uh, mm -hmm. your self-education, mm -hmm. and your self-learning uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So this personal development has to become a desire from mm -hmm. the employee. And they are right who come for a job will never develop himself. But to come for a career, he will be looking out at now. Now I'm an officer, tomorrow I'm a manager, next mm -hmm. week I'm a senior manager, then become a director, then become CEO, then become chairman, then become global, then, then, then. Because these people look at a career. Mm -hmm. Now I'm qualified from a university, with a degree of uh, history, mm -hmm. with a degree of uh, architect, mm -hmm. with a degree of agriculture and water and sanitation, when mm -hmm. I'm going to produce new theories and make new laws to govern all this, mm -hmm. it is, as I mentioned in the meeting, the humanitarian work is like a pyramid without mm -hmm. a peak, without a pinnacle. Mm -hmm. The more you rise, to the top, the more you find that your top has another top, and the mm -hmm. top has a third top, because mm -hmm. because community development and mm -hmm. community change and mm -hmm. community growth is by the second. It's not by the minute, it's not by the hour, it's not by the day, by the second. And it's multidimensional, cross-cutting, and very diverse. So the more you rise, the more you find that actually your level is still need to be higher and the higher and the higher and the higher again and again and again and again. And there's no end and there's no top, there's no peak, there's no mm -hmm. pinnacle for your pyramid mm -hmm. of humanitarian or social work. Because mm -hmm. you are dealing with human being and the human being problems and desires are changing by the second. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Miss Leila Hissou's uh, presentation, uh, advocacy and its uh, tactics. Uh, she uh, referred to uh, advocacy as a way to change policies and not just a way to bring in funds. Do uh, humanitarian organizations rely on these means and uh, tactics? Uh, some Western humanitarian organizations have got very strong, effective advocacy departments or divisions. Mm -hmm. Most of the Arab and Muslims do not have such a department or mm -hmm. such a division, unfortunately. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Uh, advocacy, as she said, could be a mean for fundraising, but also a mean of protection, mm -hmm. a mean of spreading the knowledge. And the word advocacy, as I mentioned before in many of my talks, uh, is written in the Quran. I remember that uh, uh, Mrs. Laila Hesu. Uh, said that advocacy was a process that she learned about nine years ago, mm -hmm. while advocacy is in the Quran more than 1440 years ago. In the Surah Al Ma'un, right, al al is to spread the news about the miskin and the needy and the hungry. The word had mm -hmm. mentioned in the Quran three times. One of them is Surah Ma'un, second Surah Al-Fajr. I can't remember the third Surah. So advocacy 
is to stand up in the middle of the storm and mm -hmm. the middle of the challenge and to say you are wrong. Advocacy mm -hmm. when you remember the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Khair Shuhada, the best of Shaheed, martyr is the one who stand in front of a tyrant ruler and said mm -hmm. that you are wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is advocacy because mm -hmm. the, such an individual is standing for the rights. Advocacy mm -hmm. should not be done individually by one organization alone or mm -hmm. to be like a feather in the middle of a storm. A feather in the mm -hmm. middle of a storm will do nothing, will have no impact. Adv advocacy should be made by the collective. I remember uh, 15, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. when I was heading Islamic Relief worldwide, mm -hmm. when we had a great advocacy idea, we used to send it to 50 or 100 organizations, mm -hmm. give them the right to review it, to edit it, and send it back to us. And instead of us as Islamic Leaf sending our statement, our idea, to say, hey guys, this is our idea. We are the first wrong in advocacy. This is wrong in advocacy. We sent our partners, the 50 or the 100 or the 200, ask their opinion. Mm -hmm. To ask them as well, if they agree, they can sign the message with us. So instead one organization signing the advocacy statement, could be 30, 40, 50 organizations. Because mm -hmm. advocacy messages could be very powerful, political, economical, mm -hmm. social messages. This is number mm -hmm. one. You have to do the through the collective. There's quite a few ways of doing advocacy for yourself, for your organization, for your community. Either you do it yourself by your own organization, mm -hmm. or you, but you as an individual, the weakest mm -hmm. as an individual. Mm -hmm. Individual cannot make the big advocacy campaign. Mm -hmm. Very rare that he or she can make that. One organization can have the right to do that, but could be very dangerous. Because mm -hmm. such organization may be working in a certain country that actually their message is making advocacy against the regime in the country or the corruption mm -hmm. in the country. The, the automatic result will be closing down of the office of the organization. This is number one, do it as an individual organization. Mm -hmm. The second option is to do it with the collective, as I mentioned, to find an organization like an umbrella organization. Such umbrella organization give, the, give her the, the statement of advocacy and ask her to send it to all its members and to mm -hmm. come from the members of the organization, not only from the organization. Mm -hmm. The third one, when you do it through an agent, Mm -hmm. An agent which is specialized in advocacy without mentioning your name. So their mm -hmm. outreach will be far more than your outreach and you'll be safe and working in this country. So mm -hmm. advocacy can have three or four strands. Individual, individual as a person, individual mm -hmm. organization, collective of organization, and a specialized company to do the advocacy on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, uh, Returning to the issue of uh, governance, uh, the presentation of um, Dr. Tariq Afifi, uh, if you were allowed, for example, to visit an institution at all levels of leadership, medium and field, what are the indicators of the optimal level of good governance in uh, this institution? We have uh, an Arabic say, say, the can rabbul bayti biddufi daribun, fashima to ahlid bayti raks. If, if, if my father is playing on the drum, myself and my sisters and my mother will be dancing. This is actually the top, you see. And that's why the leadership training, uh, leadership uh, motivation, leadership direction is extremely important and vital. It's not good enough to keep sending me young officers to the workshops. And even when I make special workshops on training for the chairman, for the directors, they don't come. They have no time for you because they think that they know more than yourself. 
And this is a sign of arrogance. As when people say that this is specialized for the CEO, chief executive officers, for the director level, for the chairman level, they have to come to learn because there's no end of learning. There's no end of collecting data. There's no end of changing the data into information, into, into knowledge, into, into product. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have to convince the leadership to keep learning every day and training by the, by the training as well, as well as we should not ignore the younger generation that actually will learn through many uh, uh, strands. First of mm -hmm. all, they learn from their experience, hands-on experience. Second, they will learn from the leadership, huh, which was them. Then they will learn from the training. So while we are trying, the, 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 it's not good enough to train the, uh, the, the, the junior staff mm -hmm. and the senior staff do not have any training. We need to bring the gap, the gap between mm -hmm. the junior, the middle, the senior, and the top leadership, to bring these gaps together. So it should become like a learning organization. <laughs> a learning organization is an organization that the top is teaching the, the top leadership is teaching the lower ranks and the lower ranks is learning from the higher and teaching the even the, the upper ranks this is going around up and down up and down according to the learning organization so mm -hmm. it's not good enough to train the middle officer or the junior officer or but it has to be both it has mm -hmm. to be both Mm -hmm. to be effective. Well, uh, uh, speaking about leadership, allow me, uh, Dr. Hani, to show you a short tape uh, and then comment on it. Okay. Ah, oh, the... I, I know that. He takes full responsibility for his job. This is the highly effective doer. He has immense willingness to work. With correct guidance and training, he will be a good performer. Here we see the the PTS potential travel source. The suppressive person, especially if uh, undetected, is a very dangerous threat to any organization. Sure. Learn how to precisely differentiate between productive and destructive people. Well, uh, what is your comment, Dr. Hani, on this tape? 
Uh, the most dangerous three members of the team are the one at the back, mm -hmm. actually, who is actually making all this trouble, uh, hiding, uh, wish washing, uh, make ba backbiting, uh, criticizing the organization, uh, hurting his colleagues. The second one is the one who is sitting on the wheel, actually mm -hmm. taking it as, as yani, no, no role for himself become a burden mm -hmm. on the organization. The third one is the one inside, inside the cart, actually sitting for a job. The, mm -hmm. and it, 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 he flows with the flow, mm -hmm. actually. And these are the three most dangerous characters in any organization. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, because the leader was busy uh, leading the organization, he did not realize mm -hmm. that other organizations are ahead of him. Mm -hmm. When he discovered that the other vehicle is running faster, he has to stop to look back and reflect, analyze the performance of the company one by mm -hmm. one. And this is what mm -hmm. we call it a uh, performance indicator, or this is what we call 390 uh, on everyone. 390 mm -hmm. analysis on everyone. So he found that actually one of them is useless. He throw him out with the mm -hmm. one at the back. The second one who was sitting on the wheel, he changed his job description. And the third one was sitting inside the cart, he changed his job description as, as well to try to let all the three of them to push in one direction. This is what happened at Nokia uh, in, mm -hmm. the, in the 90s. Uh, when they discovered that they are out of debt, mm -hmm. they, were no, they did not have corruption, they have money, they have uh, people working there, specialized, but they did not understand the continuous change around them. That's why younger organization managed to be uh, effective, more effective than them, and went through the technologies, technological change and became ahead of them. Because mm -hmm. the leadership did not realize that they're out of debt. Mm -hmm. Out of debt, so, that means that they're out of performance. Mm -hmm. It's true uh, training, governance, and knowledge management that uh, these institutions uh, can achieve safety, stability, and no struggle uh, situation. Mm. Uh, uh, allow me, uh, Dr. Hani, to ask you another question regarding the level at which uh, change could uh, occur first. Uh, Dr. Sayed, in his uh, presentation, uh, uh, gives priority to leadership training. Dr. Tariq also said uh, uh, boards of directors must be well selected and if change does not start from them, do not expect it to come from the base. Do you agree uh, that the leadership level is the first to change? Uh, this is a challenge, but it is a true finding by both Dr. Said and uh, the brother Tarek Afifi. Mm -hmm. It is absolute right, because if you get a leader who is, uh, who does not know, who does not have a vision, he's not a leader. Mm -hmm. A leader role is to create the flow mm -hmm. and let the people to follow his flow or her flow. Mm -hmm. Manager is to manage the status of the organization. And coming back to manager and leaders, even we give titles to people as directors. Mm -hmm. The word director, director means you direct the organization to this direction or this direction or this direction or this direction. Mm -hmm. Director is not a manager. Most mm -hmm. of our people in different organizations call themselves directors call themselves chief executive officers, but they are doing the job of the manager. Mm -hmm. They are doing the job of the manager. So we need somebody to tell them you have to change your job description. Mm -hmm. Then somebody to coach them, to mentor them. But this is not enough because mentoring the leadership is good. But at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, we have to keep training the younger generation and make a system inside the organization of bringing or building the future leader of the organization, the future leaders. 
So while we are training the senior staff or the senior leadership, we have to carry the other program from the volunteers, from the junior officers, from the middle uh, officers to, to actually f uh, uh, bridge the gap between the trained, highly qualified leaders and the middle and the junior uh, manager uh, leaders, inshallah. Mm -hmm. I add on to it yeah. is while you are training the, the top, you have to train actually the, the, the lower rank ones. The other levels. Dr. Abd Rabbi talked about uh, uh, considering the context factor in the knowledge management process. Uh, Dr. Tariq also uh, referred to the effects of the surrounding environment uh, on uh, governance. Uh, my question, uh, Dr. Hani, <coughs> how uh, Arab and uh, Islamic humanitarian organizations can uh, innovate uh, uh, more effectively and with less dependence on the possible disruption at Shwish of the political, societal, and cultural contexts that surround them? Yeah. Uh... If Arab in the West are different from Arab in the Arab countries. Mm -hmm. Arabs in the West, some of them are unfortunately still having the same mentality of the culture of the countries they immigrated from and come to the UK, come to Germany, to France and others. And some of them did not learn enough. Mm -hmm. Actually, how the organization or the, 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 how the community is changing and developing technologically, socially, philosophically, uh, culturally, morally, and others. Mm -hmm. And they kept themselves living in ghettos. Even some of them, if you go to France, if you go to, you find some of the Arabs don't speak French. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you go to Spain, some of the Arabs don't speak even uh, Spanish. Mm -hmm. Same for Portugal. If you come to UK, some of the Arabs do not speak uh, English. Mm -hmm. Same in Germany and others. Those will never make any change. And But unfortunately, some of them are leading the organizations. Mm -hmm. okay. So the surrounding or the albia, you know, the atmosphere around you is shaping your culture, is shaping your philosophy of thinking, is shaping your ideology. Mm -hmm. Actually, because you have been impacted by mm -hmm. what is mentioned around yourself mm -hmm. in positive way or in negative way. Mm -hmm. But if you isolate yourself and live in a ghetto, you will be living in the last century. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The context that you have to create has to be practical. You do not bring a context which is not applicable to the mm -hmm. community. It has mm -hmm. to be a balance, practically. You cannot just come and say, I have a great idea from uh, Harvard University, mm -hmm. from Oxford University, from uh, Lisbon University, uh, from uh, Washington, whatever it is, university, mm -hmm. and, 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 or from London University, or Manchester, or Cambridge, or Oxford, and just put it in this culture, mm -hmm. in this atmosphere, could be in Egypt, could be in Yemen, could be in uh, Syria, as if you are bringing a seed or a tree, actually, which is suitable to be planted in sub-zero temperature and you plant it in a hot Africa. Mm -hmm. I gave you an example. Do you want, can you plant banana or mango tree in Siberia, in Russia? The answer, no. Mm -hmm. No, but because of what? Because of the atmosphere, the temperature mm -hmm. actually is sub-zero. Neither the banana tree will grow, nor the mango tree will grow. So the context has to be modified and applicable. Some people say that you are not ready for democracy. We mm -hmm. come and tell him what kind of democracy you are talking about. Democracy was known in Africa and India before Europe came out as Europe, before mm -hmm. America was discovered. 
before Latin America was discovered. So mm -hmm. what do you mean by democracy? Mm -hmm. Democracy was in Africa under the, the Tabaldi tree, the two, three hundred years old big tree, mm -hmm. either after uh, midday or before sunset. And people used to come and discuss issues with the leadership of the village. You talk about democracy in, in a boardroom, for this year call. But mm -hmm. democracy did not start only in Europe or America, because Africa has been monitoring and following democracy for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. This is a context inside the atmosphere which you talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, allow me, Dr. Hani, to uh, show uh, a comment uh, received from one of our uh, followers. <laughs> سؤال الدكتور هاني في الآونة الأخيرة أي في السنة الأخيرة وبعد خاصة ما عرف بالربيع العربي شهدت دولنا العربية وبالتحديد تونس ظهور طوفان من الجمعيات الخيرية لكن هذه الجمعيات أو القائمين عليها تنقصهم الخبرة والتجربة في هذا المجال من ناحية ومن ناحية أخرى يفتقدون إلى جسور تواصل بينهم وبين المنظمات العالمية الكبرى المانحة على غرار منظمة الإغاثة الإسلامية وغيرها من المنظمات الكبرى فسؤالي دكتور باعتباركم مؤسس منظمة الإغاثة الإسلامية وعامل بالقطاع الإنساني العالمي ما هي النصائح التي بإمكانكم أن تقدموها لمثل هذه الجمعيات لكي يتواصل نشاطها الإنساني وشكرا خديجة صالح said during the Arab Spring many humanitarian institutions appeared but they lack experience and lack bridges with donors what advice uh, can you, uh, doctor, give to such organizations? First of all, it is a very healthy sign mm -hmm. because uh, allow young people to make their initiatives, to build their organizations mm -hmm. and give them the space, give them the liberty, give them the civil liberty space to expand their activities and regulate them. Uh, when Khadija, uh, um, our sister, have her baby and he came out as a boy or a girl, the baby will not know what's her, uh, him, uh, what's surrounding. Mm -hmm. She will have to take him by the hand for years till she send him to school and from the school, primary school to secondary school to university till become independent. This exactly the baby is like these organizations. You need a lot of hand holding, but what we need to provide them with civil, with enough civil liberty space to grow, mm -hmm. beside the regulation, this mm -hmm. is very important. The other point, actually, during the Arab Spring, or during any uh, uprise or any social change, mm -hmm. the priority is communication, 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 and networking. We have to communicate with our neighbors in the same street, in the same area, in the same town, in the same village, in the same district, in the same country. Mm -hmm. Without communication, we'll not know, we'll never know what's happening next door. So make communication and networking as a priority. And this communication would be with relevant organization like yourself or initiatives or mm -hmm. in a normal state status with the government in a normal status with the embassies in mm -hmm. a normal status with the international community mm -hmm. so without communication and networking you cannot develop yourself beside mm -hmm. the most important thing in this is how big is the civil liberty space mm -hmm. around you ساعة الحريات للمجتمعات. This is what we need. If the communities will feel that there is certain freedom, they will excel. They will develop. They will fly high. 
inshallah. Uh, uh, let me ask you one last question uh, uh, regarding the humanitarian work license, uh, which uh, Dr. Sayed talked about. And you also uh, talked about repeatedly. What is, uh, Dr. Hani, uh, the necessity of this license? How do you imagine the possibility of activating uh, this license and who is eligible to adopt it? You see, it's not, also, it's not only uh, giving accreditation, mm -hmm. giving the stamp to the organization. First of all, you have to put the regulation. Mm -hmm. The regulation that you need to obtain such accreditation could be 10, could be 15, could be 20, could be 30 points. Mm -hmm. This is number one as regulation. Then you ask this organization to invite you to bring an expert to mm -hmm. investigate the organization from inside to see their performance, see their structure, see their behavior, and see all these sorts of things. And after this expert sitting inside the organization for two or three weeks, he will come and say, yes, we give accreditation to this organization, or no, we'll not give the accreditation to the organization. This costs money. This costs money. In some areas, it might cost 15, 20,000 euro for one organization, and should be renewed every year or every two years according to our regulation. Will mm -hmm. the organization be willing to pay this amount of money actually to be accredited or not? This number one. But before that, I think Dr. Syed or Tariq was talking about who should be humanitarian worker. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. come jumping on a bandwagon and taking photographs here and there and distributing food here and there without knowledge, without experience, without actually understanding the context of what do we mean by humanitarian work. That's why we need to make a training program to give a certificate to the qualified people who knows what do we mean by humanitarian work mm -hmm. as program, as policy, as procedures, as government governance, as uh, knowing the relationship between organization and others, and all mm -hmm. these sort of things, and mm -hmm. has working in a conflict zone or a non-conflict zone, working in a disaster-stricken area and a non-disaster-stricken area, and all these sort of things. What was happening nowadays, because it's easy in the West to get a organization to be registered, is anybody or any group of people mm -hmm. can register an organization and can start this fund without any knowledge without any training, without any experience. And this becomes a big problem on the whole mm -hmm. sector, unfortunately. That's mm -hmm. why accreditation is one thing which is very important, but mm -hmm. believe me, it's not going to be less than 15, 20,000 euro for each organization. The second one is uh, training, actually, the young people to become a humanitarian and social worker. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you uh, very much, Dr. Hani, for uh, these valuable comments and uh, many thanks to you, our valued followers. During the next week, we will be on a date with uh, valuable presentations about in inspiring experiences in humanitarian work. So uh, be with us. Until then, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Dr. Hani was a strong believer in the prophetic saying, none of you truly believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. I think Dr. Hani is one of the great philanthropists, one of the great humanitarians of our current times. Dr. Hani Elbana for services to Islamic relief. Hani Elbana.